Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to apply this depth of field effect in Photoshop. So you'll be able to transform photos like this into this. Now a lot of cameras have lenses that can automatically achieve this depth of field effect, but a shallow depth of field cannot be achieved by that many cameras, it's mostly high quality cameras, but phone cameras and lower quality cameras usually can't get this type of shallow depth of field. But it's a great way to make your photos look cleaner and more professional overall. So I'm going to show you how to do that. What you should know is that the process might be different depending on what type of photo you use. But hopefully this tutorial will be sort of an introduction to this concept. So you should be able to apply this effect on whatever project you're working on. Now I'm going to link this photo in the video description so that you can use it if you want to. So you can follow the tutorial a little bit better. But of course, if you want to use your own photo, that's okay too. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a depth map, which looks like this. So essentially, the white parts, they represent the sharp parts of the photo, and the darker gray and black parts represent the blurry part of the photo. And we can use this depth map to apply a blur effect, which in result will give us a depth of field effect, kind of like this. Alright, now let's get started. Open up your photo in Photoshop if you haven't already, and then create a new layer on top, and I'm gonna call it Lines. So what we're gonna do with this layer is to create some lines that'll make it easier for us to create the depth map. So when we create the depth map, we have to know the distance from the camera to these four fishermen, but we also need to know the distance from the camera to the ground at a certain point. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab a small brush with a hardness of 100%, and then just grab a color that can be easily visible or easily seen. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. And then on this new layer, draw a horizontal line where these four people are standing. And by the way, if you hold shift, you'll be able to draw perfectly horizontal lines. So what this means is that the distance from the camera to this person right here will be the same as the distance from the camera to the ground along this line. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with this other guy. So as you can see, I'm doing it right where his feet are. And that is because that's the only part where the distance to this person and the ground is the same. So if I'd be doing it up here, you can see that the distance between the camera and his body right here is not the same as the distance between the camera and the ground right here. So that's why we're doing it where his feet are. Now if you look at these two guys in the background, you can see that they're fairly close to each other, so I'm not going to draw a separate line for each of them. Alright, so that's pretty good. Now we're going to create the actual depth map. So first, create a group, and then place it between these two layers. Then go to Edit, or I'm sorry, go to Layer, and then New Fill Layer, and then Gradient, and click OK. So this will create sort of a, a gradient layer, pretty much. And if you click on this gradient up here, you'll be able to bring up some of the options. Now since the depth map it is pretty much based on a grayscale, then you want to start with the black to white gradient as your base, if that makes sense. And what you want to do now is, since the guy in focus will be the guy to the right, this guy over here, it means that the area where he stands is supposed to be white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point somewhere around there, and I'm going to make it white, like that. And if we look at this guy here, he is slightly out of focus because he's closer to the camera. So I'm going to change this to like a light gray color because I don't want him to be completely out of focus. He's not supposed to be that blurry. So I'm going to make it a, a light gray color and then click OK. Now these two guys in the background, they will be slightly more out of focus. So what I'm going to do now is add another point and make it dark gray, like that, and then hit OK. And then it's going to be completely out of focus, this part way back in the distance. So this part will be black. 
Alright, that's pretty good. And now we're done with the part of the depth map that represents the ground. Now we're going to create the part of the depth map that represents the four fishermen. And we're going to start with the guy to the left. So I'm going to hide the lines layer and the group. And I'm going to select the photo layer. And I'll just zoom in a little bit so I can see him better. And I'm going to use my selection tool, or I mean my quick selection tool to select him. I prefer using the quick selection tool with a small size. And as always, the more time you spend on your selections, the better it'll look in the end. But for this time, you don't really need to spend too much time. And I think that should be pretty good. And now I'm going to go to the refine edge to just make some small adjustments. And I'm just going to smoothen it out a little bit like that. And then I'm going to hit OK. Alright, so what I need to do now is I need to feather this selection and this is because if I didn't do that, his body would be blurry but the edge around him would be sharp and that doesn't really look too good. So I'm going to go to feather, so select, modify feather and I'm going to use a feather radius of 10 pixels and then click OK. What you want to do now is you want to go back to the group, so enable it and then create a new layer above the gradient fill then go to edit fill and choose color now you want to just pick a color that is the same as the color of the ground where he is standing so i'm just, I'm just going to sample a color from where his feet are and then i'm going to click ok and then ok again and i'm going to go to select and deselect now you can see that the the shade of gray on his body will be the same shade as the shade of the ground where he is standing, if that makes sense. So this means that his body will have the same amount of blur as the ground right here, not the ground right here. Alright, so now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other guy. So I'm going to hide the group again, select the photo layer, grab my quick selection tool and I'm going to start selecting him. Alright, now I've selected him. Now since this guy will be in focus, the edge around him is supposed to be sharp, so I'm not going to add any feather. But I'm going to go to refine edge and just make it a little bit smoother. And something like that should be good. I'm going to shift the edge a little bit to contract it a little bit like that. And then I'm going to hit OK. And again, I'm going to create a new layer within the group. First, I need to enable the group. And I'm going to fill it with white since he'll be in focus. He's supposed to be sharp. So I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, and then I'm going to choose White. And I'm going to deselect. All right, so now the depth map looks like this. And you can see that if you look at his feet, this color right here is not really white and if that's the case you can just go back to your gradient map and change it which is what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna move this slider a little bit like that and I'm also gonna add another one right here a white one and that should be pretty good so now I'm gonna click OK and now you can see that the ground right here where his feet are is also white. And you can see that there is the selection is not really perfect right here. So I'm just going to go to that layer 
and I'm gonna fill it with white using my brush. So I'm just grab a white color and I'm just gonna fill it in real quick like that. And that should be pretty good. And the thing with these guys is that they will be out of focus and so will the background behind them, which means that the edge between these bodies and the background is sort of irrelevant. Now, if we look at this guy, he's supposed to be blurry, but the background behind him is supposed to be sharp. So there's a difference in sharpness between his body and the background. That's why we had to add the feather. And that's not really the case when it comes to these guys. So actually, I don't really have to add a selection at all. They can just sort of be a part of the gradient depth map, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to leave them as they are. Now I noticed that I'm going to need some more contrast between this area right here and the sharp area. Because otherwise, this area will be almost as sharp as this one, which I don't really want. I want this area to have a little bit of blur. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the gradient fill again. And I'm just going to make this color a little darker. So this will eventually give a more blurrier look right there. And I think that's pretty good, so I'm going to click OK. And I'm also going to make this silhouette a little darker as well. So I'm going to just double click on this layer to bring up the layer styles. And I'm just going to add a color overlay and just grab a little bit of a, a darker gray, kind of like that. And then I'm going to click OK. OK, now we're actually done with our depth map. And again, if you want to, you could do the silhouettes or the selections around the two fishermen here in the background, but the difference will be barely noticeable, so I'm not going to do that. Alright, so what you want to do now is you want to select the group and make sure that it is enabled and not hidden. You also want to make sure that the lines layer is hidden as well. So what you should see now is pretty much the depth map and nothing else. So then go to filter, or I'm sorry, go to select, and then color range. On the select menu, make sure that you click on highlights. Then bring the fuzziness and the range all the way up. This will turn this these highlights into a selection, pretty much. So do that and then click OK. Make sure that invert is not selected. Then you want to go over to the channels tab. It should be in the same sort of panel as the layers. So click on that tab and then add a new channel. The channels should be completely black by default. So what you want to do now is you want to click Ctrl or Command I. And this is going to invert the selected area. So this is going to create a new channel and it should look exactly like our depth map. Now you want to deselect, so go to select and deselect and go back to your layers. Then you want to hide the group and click on the photo, which should bring it back. And if it doesn't bring the photo back, you can just go to your channels and then hide the new channel and then enable the other ones. Photoshop should do this by default, but if it doesn't, that's what you need to do. Anyway, so you want to do that and then you want to click on the photo, make sure that the layer is selected. Now we're going to go to filter, blur, and then lens blur. And that should bring up this window right here. Now, if you look at the settings to the right, you can see that we have this preview option. Now, if you click on the preview check mark, you'll be able to see your changes as you make them. The problem is that this is a fairly heavy process for your computer, so you might experience some lag. So I'm going to leave it disabled for now. And then I'm going to enable it later. So what you want to make sure that the source is set to alpha one, which is the channel that we created earlier. And the blur focal distance is supposed to be low. And then you also want to click on invert because otherwise the black areas will be sharp and the white areas will be blurry which is not what we want. 
So for the other settings, the radius is pretty much the amount of blur. And I'm going to leave that at maybe 40 or 50, 45 is a good number. And I'm going to enable the preview just so I can see how it looks right now. And I think that looks pretty good. So these other settings are mostly details. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what settings you should use because it's only details and also it's different depending on the photo that you use. But you can play around with these settings if you want to. I'm actually going to leave them as they are. But once you're done, you can just click OK. And now you should have a depth of field effect in your photo. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I uh, hope you found it useful. And again, the process is very different depending on the photo that you use, but I hope that it still worked out for you and your project. And uh, that's all I had for you today. Please subscribe for more tutorials and other graphic design related videos, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.